Hello, everyone, and welcome to Securing the Software Supply Chain. My name is Patrick Fauché, Senior Product Manager for Google Cloud, and today my colleague Dustin Ingram and I will be discussing the key principles of software supply chain security and how you can put those principles into practice using Google Cloud. First, we will cover the security challenges presented by modern software development and DevOps systems. Then, we will dive into key principles for securing your software deployment pipelines and how to implement them in your own practice. Then we will wrap up with a live demo of how the Google Cloud tools can help you improve your security posture for software delivery. So let's jump in. The scope of cybersecurity has changed dramatically over the past few years. It's no longer just about the network perimeter and patching vulnerable operating systems. Increasingly, the software delivery process itself has become a vector for attacks. The software delivery system provides multiple vectors for attackers to target. For instance, a piece of code that could be exploited or may cause sensitive data to be exposed within your system, or a weakness in the CI-CD tool chain that could allow unsanctioned code to be submitted to the build system. And of course, if there's a critical vulnerability in production that hasn't yet been patched, that can quickly expose your production system to threats. These are all fairly well-known attack surfaces. And today, there are various tools and techniques that enterprises can employ to protect against them. However, in today's software delivery environment, hackers have even more surfaces they can exploit. This is an overview of a typical software delivery pipeline. In today's DevOps practice, this process gets repeated hundreds of times every day across dozens of applications in the typical enterprise, representing thousands of opportunities for a hack to occur. Not only can code introduce security risks in the form of a vulnerability, but the build system itself can be subject to tampering. The deployment process can be circumvented, allowing unsanctioned resources into production and or dev test environments. Artifacts can even be modified in transit, which can go undetected if artifacts are not verified at each step. The SolarWinds, Microsoft Exchange, and CodeCove hacks highlight these vulnerable areas. And recently, the US executive order requiring all federal contractors and essential utilities to follow a high standard of SDLC security has accelerated the urgency and timeline for more rigorous, verifiable approaches. Now let's look at how enterprises can better secure their software delivery process. Two core concepts for creating better security in our software supply chains are starting from zero trust and incorporating these practices for building and maintaining trust more and more to the left or shift left security. For example, not only should companies ensure that applications in production are free from vulnerabilities, they should also authenticate each artifact prior to being built or deployed, as well as ensure packages and code during the development stage are free from critical vulnerabilities. As a software artifact goes from source code to build to production, each stage offers the opportunity to verify the contents or provenance of the artifact. This includes where they came from and what systems or persons have made changes or created builds. By creating attestations along the way, each with a trusted signature, the system can verify that the artifact is complying with various policies. In other words, every event or action associated with a unique artifact can generate metadata, which can then be signed to ensure it's authentic and then evaluated to determine if it's valid against a given policy. At each stage of the software supply chain, Google Cloud provides you with solutions to help you apply security practices while maintaining release velocity. With Google Cloud, you can create a build pipeline using Cloud Build to sign the build and create an attestation that shows when the build was made, what triggered the build, and whether there were any vulnerabilities. Once artifacts have been built, they need to be stored securely. Three keys to a secure artifact store is they are immutable, audible, auditable, 
and integrated. An immutable artifact means that once an artifact has been written to the store, it can't be changed or modified. Only new versions, tags, or images can be published. This ensures downstream stability and consistency. In addition, limited write access prevents unauthorized or untrusted artifacts from being published. This paired with fine-grained access controls increases trust in a given artifact. An auditable artifact store is one that makes it easy to quickly gain awareness about the state of your artifacts, including when and where they're being used, what direct and indirect dependencies they introduce, and whether any of these result in vulnerabilities, threats, or policy violations. This helps ensure that your software to delivery pipeline not only is secure, but that it can remain secure by adapting to new vulnerabilities. In addition, using a private artifact store as a mirror or pull through proxy can increase the auditability and security of all artifact usage. Finally, an integrated artifact store is one that works well with other supporting security tools, such as continuous vulnerability scanning, the ability to bring your own encryption keys, and other things that make it easy to go securely from source to production. With artifact registry and our deep scanning and analysis feature, you can securely store all your build artifacts and dependencies, such as open source packages which will be automatically scanned to identify any new vulnerabilities that occur. In addition, you can create triggers to detect any upstream changes to your packages and force a rebuild and scan, creating additional attestations, which can then be used for further policy enforcement. Policy authorization is the practice of defining policies that describe what can and cannot be done in your software delivery pipeline. These can be arbitrary and distinct based on the needs of your organization or environment, and they can evolve over time. But they commonly involve enforcing rules for provenance, governance, and compliance, as well as verifying CICD tests have been before, performed. Policy as code allows you to keep your policies alongside your application itself, where they can be tested and updated from time to time. An example of this would be verifying that the various metadata that must exist before moving an artifact into production, policy authorization allows you to define the criteria to gate the deployment, determining if a given artifact sufficiently meets those policy requirements. On Google Cloud, you can use binary authorization to create deployment policies based on container image metadata. These policies can be based on vulnerability scan results or other kinds of signatures, such as having been built by a particular pipeline or having gone through a specific QA process. You can enforce these policy checks at deployment time to verify build authenticity, security, and provenance, automatically stopping any deployment that fails the check and creating an audit log. If all checks pass, the deployment proceeds to the targeted runtimes and the container is launched. Continuous verification extends validation to the post-deployment environment. Policy conformance is re repeatedly validated throughout the entire life cycle. This is useful in a few different scenarios. For example, when changing an existing binary authorization policy, Continuous validation will inform you of existing deployments that violate the new policy, which you can then audit and update as necessary without breaking your production. When in dry run mode, continuous validation will guarantee containers can still be deployed regardless of the outcome of a policy eval, but will log policy conformance, which is useful for incrementally adopting new security policies. With both binary authorization and continual scanning and verification, as your service is running, we continually ingest the most recent security information and feeds, and we inform you if any container images, whether they are running or not, are now affected by new known vulnerabilities or policy requirements. And now I'd like to hand it over to Dustin Ingram to show you how to configure and run a secure deployment pipeline using Google Cloud. Thanks, Patrick. 
I'm Dustin, a developer advocate for Google Cloud. I'm going to give a quick demo of how developers can use binary authorization with their Cloud Run applications. I'll take a standard CI CD pipeline and configure it to add attestations to the container image it produces. By securely signing the artifacts created by our build pipeline and configuring Cloud Run to only deploy trusted artifacts, we can ensure that only artifacts from our pipeline are able to be deployed. So let's enable binary authorization. The first step is to create a binary authorization attester. An attester is what is responsible for verifying an attestation. An attestation is a record that contains metadata about the image that's been digitally signed using a private cryptographic key. Let's give this a name. And I've gone ahead and created a Cloud KMS keyring and key to use here, but you can also use your own keys. So let's import that from Cloud KMS now. And we'll create the attester. Next, I'll edit the binary authorization policy. By default, the policy allows all images to be deployed, but we want to use the attester that we just created. So we'll edit policy, allow only images that have been approved by the following attesters, and we'll add the attester that we just created, my attester, and save. Finally, I'll enable binary authorization on the existing Cloud Run service. Go and enable it here. Now, Cloud Run will only be able to deploy images that have attestations created by this attester. The process of creating an attestation is also known as signing an image. The attestation is created by signing the image's unique digest. A signer can be a person who manually creates an attestation, or a signer can be an automated process. If we switch back to our cloudbuild.yaml file, we can see that I've added an extra step to our pipeline. This new step, create attestation, happens between the publish step and the deploy step. After a container image is built, an attestation can be created to affirm that whatever required activities were performed on that image, like regression tests, vulnerability scans, or anything else. It uses the attester and key we just created to create an attestation for the image that was just created, so that when the pipeline attempts to deploy this image to Cloud Run, the correct attestations are in place to satisfy the binary po authorization policy. So let's commit this change and make our first deployment with binary authorization. We'll add the cloudbuild.yaml file that we changed, commit the changes, and we'll push. Let's review what's happening here. We've made a source change, and we've pushed it to our source repository. Cloud Build is configured to automatically run on any push to the repository. When it detects a change to the source, it builds and tests the container and pushes it to the image registry. Since our pipeline finished successfully, it generates an attestation, securely signing the image with a private key. Finally, our pipeline attempts to deploy this image to Cloud Run. Before actually deploying the image into production, Cloud Run ensures that the binary authorization policy we've set has been fully satisfied. If all the attestations for an image are verified, binary authorization allows the image to be deployed. So we can see that our build pipeline has finished successfully, and we can visit our app and see that the version deployed is what we expected to be deployed. Now that we have a binary authorization in place, let's see what happens if we try to deploy an unauthorized image. We'll try to deploy locally again from Cloud Code without any attestations. We can see that Cloud Run has now blocked the deployment because it didn't find any attestations that were valid and signed by the attester we've configured. Now, our Cloud Run service will only accept images built as part of our pipeline. What if, for some reason, our pipeline isn't working and there's an emergency hotfix we need to get into production as soon as possible? For these types of situations, you can use break glass to bypass binary authorization enforcement, deploy an image that violates the policy. Let's break glass. So I'll navigate to the Cloud Run Services console, and we can see that it's failed the deployment. Go to that service, and we can see that Cloud Run says that our update has been rejected by the policy, but we have the option to break glass. We just need to provide a justification for why we're using break glass. and break glass. Now we can see that the deployment is rolling out. When you use break glass to deploy an image, any attestations are not required. But every time this happens, a break glass event is automatically logged to Cloud Audit Logs. These logs can be used for administrators to review or to trigger other actions whenever break glass is used. To wrap up, we've seen how you can enable binary authorization for your Cloud Run applications, ensuring only trusted images are deployed, and how you can use break glass to bypass binary authorization when absolutely necessary. Back to you, Patrick. Thanks, Dustin. That was a great walkthrough of using Google tools to authenticate and authorize deployments.
As you can see, when you use Google Cloud to practice these security principles, you can quickly establish and maintain trust, improving security throughout your software pipeline, all in line with your process without sacrificing speed or quality. If you'd like to learn more about this and other topics, please visit our cloud certifications and training courses, all available online. Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed the presentation and learned something new. Thanks again to Dustin, and we hope you have a great day.